This part of amino acids focuses on how an amino acid looks when you put it in a given solution with a given pH. So before I go into that, there's one point I should make, and that's what is the basic structure of any amino acid? Every amino acid will have three things in, car in common. They will be a two carbon chain, where on one carbon is a COOH, meaning a carboxylic acid, COOH. And on the other carbon of that chain, there is nitrogen, typically NH2, with some variance in how many protons that nitrogen has, and we'll get into why that varies in a second. The other, from that carbon with the NH2, is your R group. So the R group, there are about 20 different R groups you can work with, and that's what differenti differentiates one amino acid from the other. In this example, I have given you an R group that is a carbon and then a benzene ring with an OH. This is what makes up the, the amino acid tyrosine. But this could just be a carbon or this could just be a hydrogen, and those are two other um, amino acids you could work with. Now, how, does amino, how do amino acids and pHs, what kind of questions can they ask about that? So, to explain this concept, we have to talk about something called pKa. When you hear the word pH, you think about a solution and how acidic it is. Like if you have a pH of seven, you're neutral, but if as you go a lower pH, you become more acidic, and as you get a higher pH, you become more basic. Well, pKa's kind of work the same way. The lower your pKa, the more acidic you are. The higher your pKa, the more basic you are. But while pH talks about a solution as a whole, pKa's talk about the individual pieces of the solution, meaning what makes up that solution. If we look at tyrosine, for example, there are three things that contribute to the overall acidity of the solution that it's mixed into. First of all, the carboxylic acid group, we know based on its name, is an acid. And its relative acidity is given by a pKa value of usually around 2.2. For most amino acids, it's usually low to mid twos. The amino group, well, if we remember what we talked about when we were doing chapter 20 material, amines are generally basic. And so the pKa of this group is typically around somewhere to mid-low nines, so let's say 9.4, okay? And the pK of phenol groups, phenol OHs, is usually about 10. I'm going to say 10.5 for this one, okay? So first of all, you will never have to memorize any pKa's until you take biochem. Biochem, they make you memorize all of them. Have fun with that. Anyway, um, the point being, though, is we will always give you a chart with the specific pKa's. The pKa of the alpha COOH, or the alpha carboxylic acid group, refers to this. The pKa of the alpha amino group is this. And the pKa of either what they'll say is the side chain or the R group will refer to this whole thing. Okay? So now we're given three individual pKa's for the three different functional groups of this structure, and we're asked, what does this structure look like if we put it into a solution with a pH of seven, a neutral pH. And sometimes you'll hear the word physiological pH. Physiological pH just means 7.4. But for our purposes and pretty much every question you are asked, physiological pH or neutral pH, they kind of end up giving you the same result. So now let's take a look at what we have to do for this. The first step you do is you go to this chart and you say, okay, is my pKa greater than my pH or is my pKa of my individual functional group less than my pH? Well, if the pKa is greater, the structure will be in its protonated form. And if the pKa is less, then the, pro the structure will be in its deprotonated form. And now what does it mean by protonated or deprotonated? You go to this chart over here. If you look at your carboxylic acid group, its most protonated form is just an OH. So if you ever see a carboxylic acid that they draw out in an answer choice that looks like this, OH2 positive, or they draw it out like this, where the O on the double bond is OH positive, this is automatically a wrong choice because these two will never exist. This is the most protonated an amino acid's carboxylic acid will ever be. And then its deprotonated form is just one hydrogen left. The OH becomes an O minus. The amino group in its protonated form becomes NH3, and that nitrogen becomes positive. Its deprotonated form is just NH2. Again, it's the difference of only a single proton. If you ever see an answer choice where that nitrogen is NH minus, you know that is automatically incorrect because the nitrogen will never become negative. This is the most deprotonated form it will ever have. Okay? 
And then two other common groups are OHs, which will be on your side chains, and SHs, which would be on your side chains. And both of these are very comparable to the rules we just gave for the carboxylic acid. OH or SH in their protonated form are just OH or SH, not SH2 or OH2. And in their deprotonated form, it's O minus, or oops, S minus. Okay? Finally, there's one weird looking functional group, which I'm going to redraw over here. And this is specific to one amino acid. It only exists in one amino acid, and that amino acid is arginine, where you have this weird looking thing on its side chain. Something with three different nitrogens and then a hydrogen over there. So, what does this look like when it is protonated? Well, you can see it here, but let's talk about why that is the case, because this might come up. Which of these nitrogens is most basic? There are three of them, so why is the one on top on the double bond getting the proton? Well, consider it by point of resonance. This nitrogen has a lone pair, this nitrogen has a lone pair, and both of those lone pairs are resonating with this double bond end. This can resonate down like that, and that can resonate up. Or in a different resonance structure, this lone pair could resonate down, and this could resonate up. And if you did that, let's say I did the one on the, uh, the arrows from the left, or the arrows from the right, rather, well, that would become single bond N, H. Now that nitrogen is negative kind of because it got an extra set of electrons. We didn't touch the one on the left, and the other one on the right made a new double bond there. So it's N, H, 2, positive. Now notice, this nitrogen has to give up its lone pair to do that resonance. It needs that lone pair. This nitrogen didn't have to give up its lone pair, and it ends up becoming negative through resonance. That nitrogen that's negative is very easily able to use those electrons to go out and grab a proton. If you were to protonate one of these two nitrogens, they would no longer be able to resonate because they would, let's say I protonated the one on the right, that would become NH2 positive. Now there's no lone pair to even do the resonance in the first place. So you never want to protonate somewhere where you end up making that thing that you protonated lose its ability to resonate, which usually ends up meaning the thing on the double bond is the thing that gets protonated. And that's why it's NH2 on the double bond positive, not any of these nitrogens over here that got protonated. Okay? But again, this is one exception, but they're kind of fond of it, so it's good to know. So now let's go back to the question at hand. We have tyrosine, and we're told we're mixing it into a pH of 7. What is this structure going to look like when we put it in that pH? So look at each individual functional group one by one. So starting with the carboxylic acid group, we have a pKa of 2.2. 2.2 is less than pH because pH is 7, so 2.2 is less than 7, so that means it must be in its deprotonated form. Its deprotonated form, based on this chart, is the carboxylate, the O minus. So all you have to do is say, okay, well, my final structure in that pH, this should be O minus, like that. Now let's look at the next functional group. NH2 has a pKa of 9.4. 9.4 is greater than the pH, 7. When pKa is greater than pH, you are protonated. Go to your list, here's my nitrogen group, NH3 positive in its protonated form. So I'm going to write NH3 plus. Finally, I have my tyrosine. So the whole R group is referred to by this pKa, but it's really talking about the thing that can afford to gain or lose a hydrogen, and that's your OH. So this OH has a pKa of 10.5. 10.5 is greater than 7, pKa is greater than 7, protonated, and my protonated form for OH is OH, so this stays the same. And so this right here would be my structure of tyrosine at a pH of 7. Now, one other question you can sometimes get um, is, uh, it'll be a multiple choice question, and they'll give you a bunch of different protonated forms of your amino acid, and it'll ask, which of these amino acids in their protonated states could never exist in any appreciable form? Meaning, we'll have this OH and this N minus or something. Does that exist? Can that, can that ever exist? So I'm not going to draw out multiple choice questions, but I'm going to show you how to approach these questions. What you want to do is you want to create kind of a bracket for each individual pH that you could have that would change the protonation state. Meaning, we already drew out the structure for pH of 7. That's this one over here. And pH of 7 exists between the pKa of the carboxylic acid group and the amine group, which we said was 9.4. What you want to have is a drawing for every amino acid and its protonation state that falls 
out in between each of these ranges, meaning I have a pKa of 2.2, I have a pKa of 9.4, and I have a pKa of 10.5. I want to have a protonation state drawing of something that's in between these two, which we said was 7, so we already have that drawing. But I also want a pKa drawing, or a drawing of something that has a pH of something in between this, so let's say a pH of 10. And I also want to show the outer limits, what it would look like in a pH of, say, 1, and what it would look like at a pH greater than 10.5, let's say pH of 12. Now, why am I doing this? Because if I, draw a draw, if I make a drawing for each of these specific pHs, I will, con I will be able to see every different protonation, protonation st state that can exist for tyrosine. So we already drew out 7, so let's redraw that over here. We have the carboxylic acid being deprotonated, the NH2 being NH3 positive, and the tyrosine being untouched, or I keep calling it the tyrosine, the, the phenol ring being untouched, still an OH. Now let's, concern, let's consider the outer limits first for a pH of 12 and a pH of 1. A pH of 1 is the, is the lowest pH. It's lower than every single pKa value. And if you go back to that chart that I erased, we said that when your pKa is greater than your pH, which it would be for every case in a pH of 1, it's lower than all the other pKa's. So when pKa is greater than pH, you're protonated. And if you're in a pH that's lower than every single pKa you have, then every single functional group would be protonated. So the structure of tyrosine in a pH of 1 would mean the carboxylic acid is protonated, the amino group is protonated, and the side chain is protonated. Every single thing is protonated because you're in a super acidic solution, there are tons of protons floating around to be given. Okay? And now we have our structure of 7, let's go over the, the highest pH, a pH of 12. If I have a pH of 12, well, it's kind of the opposite of what I was describing here. Your pH is greater than every single pKa, meaning your pKa is less than every, uh, every single pKa is less than the pH, which means you're in your deprotonated form. Which again makes sense. If you're in a solution that is super basic, then you should be ripping off protons from everywhere you can. Deprotonated. Which means when I draw out that tyrosine, everything is going to be deprotonated. So I have the carboxylic acid being O minus. I have the nitrogen being NH2. And I have the side chain, if I can draw it right, the side chain will also be deprotonated in this version. So O minus. So this is what it would look like at the highest possible pH, because every single thing will be deprotonated. Now we just have to consider the pH of 10. So we said that the, the OH group of the benzene ring had the pKa of 10.5, and we said the amino group had the pKa of 9.4. So now we're kind of in between, right? We have, let's start by just drawing the base structure of tyrosine. And let's see. So, the amino group has a 9.4 pH, uh, pKa, but we're in a pH of 10. So pKa is less than pH. The NH2 group, or the, yeah, the NH2 group would be deprotonated, so NH2. But 10.5 is greater than pH, the group pH of 10, so it will be protonated. So this should still be an OH. So notice, as you go through each next step, you start from something where everything is protonated, you become slightly more basic and your most acidic group became deprotonated. You go one step further and now your two most acidic groups became deprotonated. And then you go to the furthest point possible and now every single thing that could get deprotonated is deprotonated. So the answer to this question would be something that doesn't match up with any of these structures. These are the four structures that will exist in some appreciable amount. And your multiple choice question, your, your answer to the multiple choice would be something like this, where you have let's say the benzene, ty the tyrosine's R group being O minus, but the NH2 group is NH3 positive. We know this should never happen because NH3, or the NH2 group, has a lower pKa than 
the, o, the OH, meaning the NH2 is faster to get deprotonated than this oxygen. If this oxygen is deprotonated, this nitrogen should be deprotonated as well.